Hey everyone, thanks for coming back to the Gene Food YouTube channel. Um, today I'm going to talk about alcohol. I have decided this year, 2024, that I'm going to give up alcohol for an entire year. Now, why would I do something that sounds you know, a little crazy? I mean, I love to have a glass of wine. I love to have cocktail, beer with a football game. Um, but this year I decided to go zero alcohol. And I did that after dusting off some of the research that we use at Gene Food to score customers into different diet types uh, based on alcohol metabolism. So the genetic markers that we're looking at are mostly geared towards short-term alcohol metabolism. So people that have, you know, it's very common in East Asian populations for people to have an alcohol flush, like a flushing reaction after they have a glass of wine, even a small amount of alcohol. And that's because they're doing a poor job of clearing acetaldehyde, which is one of the toxic byproducts of ethanol alcohol uh, metabolism. So um, in people that have this flush, they, they can't metabolize the acetaldehyde and it, and it it kind of has immediate toxic impacts on their system. And then there's, that's the ALDH2 gene. And then for the ADH1B uh, gene, there are SNPs in that region where um, the conversion of alcohol ethanol into acetaldehyde is, is much faster. So your, your acetaldehyde um, uh, levels will rise much faster in somebody that has normal, quote unquote, normal short-term alcohol metabolism. Well, in, in, in my case, I carry neither of those SNPs. I actually have excellent short-term alcohol metabolism in the short term, meaning my acetaldehyde isn't shooting sky high after I drink a glass of wine. And I'm also able to do a better job of clearing the acetaldehyde uh, once it has been metabolized in, in my system. So I'm doing a good job in the short term. But one of the things that we struggle with at gene food is identifying the risk alleles for some of these SNPs because the risk alleles in most genetic tests are geared towards this short-term problem of poor alcohol metabolism on the night you're drinking, right? And however, if you look at some of the studies and you start looking at the impact of being of having a great alcohol tolerance and being able to to, to metabolize alcohol really well, you see in those populations an increased risk for several site-specific cancers. And, um, and, and I think if you're going to posit a, a reason, I'm, I'm not sure that it's, that it's mechanistic as much as it is. You are not, your body is not giving you a feedback loop of negativity when you drink alcohol. You know, when, when you start looking at the research on alcoholism and whether um, alcoholism is genetic, it turns out that based on the, the, the GWAS studies, the genome-wide association studies, the best and most reliable markers that impact on risk for alcoholism are actually people who carry these SNPs that cause them to have poor short-term metabolism of ethanol are much, 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 much less likely to become alcoholics, to become alcohol dependent. And the reason for that is drinking is an unpleasant experience for them. So when they drink, they have this, their body is you could argue that these people have an accurate, a much more accurate feedback loop from their body. Their body is saying, whoa, you just drank a toxin. Don't do that. Right. Those of us like myself who have better alcohol metabolism in the short term, don't get that immediate feedback for us. Drinking is much more pleasant. And so when you start looking at you go beyond this kind of template of, OK, you have alcohol flush, you don't, which is what most of these SNP tests will do. And you look at the long-term implications for people that, that have this excellent alcohol metabolism, the, the cancer risk goes up, you know, and, 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 I, and again, it's because I think you're able to tolerate a toxin better. Acetaldehyde, which everyone's body converts ethanol into acetaldehyde enzym enzymatically, is a group one carcinogen. I mean, it's listed, I mean, it's, it is a known carcinogen. And that is the impact of drinking alcohol as you are converting that ethanol into acetaldehyde. Now, does that mean you should never have a glass of wine or that you need to go orthorexic about it and freak out about it? No. Like after this year of, 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 of no drinking, I probably will continue having a glass of wine with dinners on occasion or on a special occasion. I love mezcal. It's not to be, it's not to be dogmatic about it. It's just to say, knowing where you sit is important. 
I think it's I think it's important for parents to know this. I think it's important for for uh, adults to know this for for their kids. But I am reminded of a of a time that I stopped into one of my favorite bookstores several years ago, and I picked up a copy of uh, Christopher Hitchens. It's it's a book called Mortality. So Christopher Hitchens was a prolific, brilliant, um, incredible writer, and he was also known as just a, a having a in, in very robust alcohol tolerance. And he wrote a book, he developed esophageal cancer and he developed a book. He wrote a book as he was dying about the experience of his own mortality and what it was like to feel death descending upon him. And I didn't buy the book because frankly, I didn't want to, I didn't want to read or spend days and weeks with the book. It's very, it's a very morbid uh, topic, but I will, I will never forget reading a section of the book in which he, he almost laments his alcohol, his alcohol tolerance, how much he was able to drink. And he says something similar to what I've just relayed earlier here about people that have excellent short-term alcohol metabolism, which is he wishes his body had been more sensitive. So it could have given him warnings prior to developing this terrible illness that, that he developed possibly because of a, a lot of drinking, right? And so it may, reflecting on, on that and thinking about that in terms of the research for people that have excellent short-term alcohol metabolism who can handle their alcohol, but have, in many cases, the SNPs associated with the short-term metabolism are also associated with long-term risk. I thought to myself, you know, um, drink, drinking is just not, it's just something that I want to be much more mindful of. And I want to use it in a celebratory fashion, not as not as a, a constant and, and sort of a, a constant companion of the weekend, or it's just something I do. I have a beer, I have a. I want to be much more mindful of my drinking. Um, so, and it, to tie a bow on it, it's like you can look at this and you'd say, okay, yeah, well, well, these short term errors in ethanol metabolism, where you're getting this acetaldehyde elevated or inability to clear it, that's the real problem. You could say that the real problem is actually when you do a better job of handling that acetaldehyde, because over time it will, it will mask for your body, the severity of the toxin that you're drinking, uh, that is alcohol. And so, you know, it was, it was reflecting on that, thinking about wanting to be more focused with work and a little more dialed in and, and, and just, and just feel better and kind of take things to the next level with parenting and relationships. I decided, you know what? One year, no alcohol rooted in genetic research that tends to show that you think you have a robust alcohol metabolism and you do for that one night out, but over time, you know, over a long enough time horizon, your robust alcohol metabolism actually could be hurting you, not helping you.